Okay, hello everyone. I'm Brett Matsura and welcome back to Advanced Real Estate Objection Handling, where I break down common real estate objections from buyers and sellers and help you guys rebuttal them using conversational selling techniques. Now, for those of you that are attending live, thank you for attending. But for those of you, if you're catching this on the replay on YouTube, be sure to like this video by giving me the thumbs up and subscribe to this video so that you can be notified of any new releases or new training releases. So guy, in today's training, I'm going to be going over, uh, I'm going to be rebuttaling the objections number six through nine of the Mike Ferry 40 real estate objection handlers using conversational techniques. Now, if you want to download the original of this, uh, uh, of Mike Ferry's objection handlers, uh, it's free to download. Just go to mikeferry.com. Uh, they're very direct. What the, 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 the style that I use is actually very conversational, but you can see the differences in, in going directly as a driver versus just being very conversational. Now, the technique that I use when I'm doing most objection handlers is what I call the ultimate rebuttal formula. And this is really broken down into four specific steps. Now, you may have heard me say this before, is 90% of what you say is not, or, or communication is not necessarily words. It's how you say it. It's your voice fluctuation. It's your tempo. It's your pauses. It's, it's a lot of different things. The words are the fundamentals, right? The words are your punches and your kicks when it comes to objection handling. So I've created this ultimate rebuttal formula using conversational selling. And what it does, it gives you a format on how to respond to any question or objection. And the way that you first start out is you acknowledge what they say. This is active listening. Now you can acknowledge what they say simply by repeating what they say or stating that, hey, you, you, you get it. The next thing you do is you're going to approve what they say. You're going to make them right. Has there ever been a time where you've talked to someone and everything that they said was opposite of what you say, opposite of your belief system? And how did that make you feel? Well, it probably put you a little bit on the defense. The last thing you want to do when you're talking to a consumer, when you're talking to a seller wanting to sell their home is to disagree with them, make them wrong and put them on the defense because that goes totally against of what your total objective is and that's listing the property. So you're gonna approve and then you're gonna throw in what I refer to as a softener. It's a pre-statement before you actually go into the question. And I'll give you examples of this. And then the last thing you're gonna do is you're going to ask a question. Asking a question, the person who asks the questions will always control the conversation. And if you think about any type of communication that you have with any person on planet Earth, then you'll see that the person who asked the questions is the one who's controlling the conversation. If you're just answering the questions, you're not, you're not controlling the conversation. So the strategy or the process is answer a question, ask a question, right? Respond, ask. But in this formula, it's acknowledge, approve, insert a softener and ask a question. Now we're going to roll into the Mike Ferry's uh, number seven of his 40 real estate objection handlers. And what it says is you're too busy. I want someone who can give us the attention that we deserve. Now you're too busy. I want somebody who will give us the attention that we deserve. So really there's two components to this, to this objection and or question. Part one is that you're too busy. I don't, I don't want to mess with that. See, I want to be too busy, but I'm never too busy for more business. There are agents who are doing more than 100 transactions a year. My best year as an active agent was 57. And I can tell you with absolute certainty, if you want to get a home sold, you need to find somebody who's busy. The last thing you want to do is find somebody who's not busy. I'm not going to go into it on that just because that's not really what the objection, the way that I would go about that. But the second part of this is 
I want somebody who can give us the attention we deserve. Now, when you look at this statement from the consumer's point of view, what they're saying is that, you know what, Brett, you're too successful. You're selling way too many houses. I want somebody who gives me more of a personal touch. That's what I'm hearing when they say this. So let's talk about this using the ultimate rebuttal formula. So number one is I'm going to acknowledge what they say. And the way I'm going to do is, you know what? You know, that makes sense. Okay. I'm saying that makes sense. It does make sense. Right. Do you want somebody so busy that they can't actually service your listing? The last thing you want to have happen is sign the contract and disappear. You know, if you were on the consumer side. So, you know, so the way that I would respond to this is acknowledging and say, you know what? That makes complete sense. Now I'm going to make them right. In fact, you know, most homeowners I speak with, they want to make sure that they find the right agent to sell their home. Notice what I did there. I did what's called a level shift. See, their objection was you're too busy and I want somebody who can give us the attention we deserve. And what I did is like, look, most homeowners want an agent that uh, they want to find the right agent to sell their home. So I, I switched it in from you're too busy. I want somebody who can give us the attention we deserve to finding the right agent. Now I'm going to throw in a softener. Now, if you don't mind me asking Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when you say the attention you deserve, okay, I'm throwing that in as active listening. I want them to make sure that I'm hearing what they're saying. What kind of attention are you looking for in an agent? I mean, it's a valid question, right? If somebody is coming to you with the objection that you're too busy and I want someone who can give us the attention that we deserve, wouldn't it make sense if you're the one who's delivering a service that you has to ask them to define specifically what is it the attention that they're seeking in the agent that they choose? It's no different than asking the question of, what are you looking for in an agent, except you're just reiterating what it is that they said, rephrasing that and saying, okay, I, you know, I, I, I totally get it. In fact, most homeowners want to find the right agent to sell their home. Now, if you don't mind me asking, you know, when you say the attention that we deserve, what is it specifically that you're looking for attention wise from an agent that you choose? And then let them answer the question. Now, most of the time I find that what they would say is, well, you know, I want somebody who's going to answer the phone when I call. I want somebody who's responsive. That's the only reason why somebody would do this. You know, when I, when I write down my notes on this, uh, I wrote down, well, that the, the rebuttal is, you know, what is it specifically the, the attention that you're looking for? Well, we want someone to make sure that when we hire them, when we call them, they don't, you know, when we hire them, they don't just disappear. We want them to we be available when we have questions. We don't want them to just have us sign a contract, put a sign on the yard, and then disappear to pick up a, uh, a check at closing. You know, I totally get it. Now I'm just going to repeat the process, guys, you know, because now it's a new objection, right? It's no longer that they want the objection that they deserve, or excuse me, the attention that they deserve. Now they're very specific and they want somebody who answers their phone and actually is responsive. Okay, that's a whole different objection. I call it a level two objection. It gives you a little bit more details. Okay, you know what? I totally get it. Um, you don't want somebody who disappears on you, right? No. In fact, I can honestly tell you that most homeowners or not most homeowners, all homeowners who sell their home do not want to list, in it, list their property with somebody who's just going to disappear on them. But let me ask you this, this question. See guys, I just did the whole uh, rebuttal formula. Acknowledge, approve, throw in a softener. Now I'm going to ask the question. But let me ask you this. Now that's a softener. That's no different than actually saying, let, you know, if you don't mind me asking, what I'm saying now is, but let me ask you this question. My company and I have sold a lot of homes in this area. Okay, now you're showcasing your experience without directly saying it. It's just very subtle. You know, my company, I have sold a lot of homeowners, or excuse me, has have sold a lot of homes in this area. And most homeowners that I work with, they want three separate things. They want to sell their home for the most money. They want to sell their home in the quickest amount of time. 
And the last thing is they want to sell it with the least amount of hassle. Now, do you feel the same way? Are you, are you looking for those same things? Well, yes, Brett, I, I am. You know, I totally get it. So if I could show you a plan where not only did we accomplish these three very important things, but you also felt comfortable that the level of service that I'm providing is adequate for the attention that you're looking for in an agent, would you consider listing your home with me? Now, listen, look, look what I did on that. I acknowledged everything in that closing statement. I said, if I do this, you know, most homeowners want to sell their home for the most money in the quickest amount of time with the least amount of hassle. And I say most homeowners because I'm being, you know, I'm throwing in the chance that one of these days I'm going to come with someone who wants to sell it in the longest amount of time for the least amount of time money with the largest amount of hassle. I haven't found it yet. I've been 23 years in the business. Haven't found it yet. I'm sure there's somebody out there who's going to prove me wrong. So that's why I say most homeowners. But if I can accomplish those three things and outline my service and show you my plan of action and the service to whereas you feel comfortable and confident that you get the attention you deserve while also achieving those three main objectives, would you list your home with me? And then just be quiet. The next person who talks loses. A lot of times real estate agents will ask a question and then they don't give the person the time to respond. And when it's a closing statement, you've got a, no matter how long it takes, when you ask a question like that, would you list your home with me? You've got to just be quiet. Zip. And that's how I would do objection number seven. You're too busy. I want someone who can give us the attention that we deserve. So that's number seven. Uh, that is going to be next Monday's role-playing objection in the objection handling group for uh, in the role-playing group. Okay, let's go into the next one. Number eight of the Mike Ferry 40 real estate objection handlers. And that one is, I want to find a house before I put mine on the market. I want to find a house be put I before I put mine on the market. Now, guys, this makes total sense to me. It makes complete sense to me, and it also makes complete sense to the consumer. But you can't just take it at this because the one thing that we don't know right now is their motivation, right? So we don't know if this is a condition or if this is an actual objection. A condition meaning we have to know what their motivation is. If they don't have any motivation, if their motivation is just to find a house that's 50% on sale, you know, 50% lower be lower than the market. Look, I want to find a house that's half the price before I sell my home for 120% of the price. Because that, this scenario is the exact same person. Somebody who wants to go out and buy the market, who thinks that they're going to be able to find a house for half price in this market, is that same person who wants to list their current house for 20% over market. I mean, if you're going to list at 20% over market, why not list it over 50% over market? I mean, isn't 50% more money better than 20%? I digress. So that's the first thing we want to talk about is, is this a condition or is this an objection? So here's how I'm going to do it. Remember, I'm going to acknowledge it. You know, that totally makes sense. Why would I use that as my acknowledgement? Because to me, it, it does totally make sense. In fact, you know, I think it's responsible. It's a responsible thing for a homeowner to do to make sure that you have a place to move before you get rid of the one that you own, right? What are you going to do? Move into a tent? Going to go rental? You could do a short-term rental. Sometimes that's a really good idea. Remember, as salespeople, we get paid to solve problems. And the bigger problem you solve, the more money that you make. It just so happens that the bigger problem typically means a higher price, right? So, not that the problem's any different than if you're working with a, a mid-range property in your market versus a high-range margin, the, the objections or the situation are the same, but the bigger the, the price, the bigger the commission. So that's why I say that. So, you know, it totally makes sense to me. In fact, I think it's the responsible thing to do as a homeowner that you don't get rid of the house that you're living in first, or at least finding a place where you're going to live first before you get rid of the house that you have. Now, 
Here's the softener. If you don't mind me asking, what kind of house, are you, what is it specifically the type of house that you're looking for? Now, as we started this, this, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a house that's half the price of what the market is. Okay. Thank you for your time. Good luck with that. So let's go back into this. So if you don't mind me asking, what is it specifically that you're looking for uh, in a house? Well, you know, I'm looking for a four bedroom, two bedroom house in the XYZ area. Oh, okay. Four bedroom, two bedroom house in the XYZ area. Have you met with a lender yet? No, I have not met with a lender yet. Okay, guys, if they haven't met with a lender yet, that is a clear sign of their motivation. People who meet with a lender are motivated. And it's not just meeting with a lender to get qualified, right? A qualification is just them asking you questions about your finances, financials. It's actually getting pre-approved where they actually provide their tax returns, their pay stubs. They've gone through the whole underwriting process. So that tells you if they're, if they've done all of that, they're very motivated. So Mr. Okay. So if you don't mind me asking, what is it the type of house that you're looking for? Well, I'm looking for a four bedroom, two bedroom house in the XYZ area. Okay. If you if, have you already met with a lender? Yes, Brett, I have already met with a lender. Did they tell you, have they given you a price of what you're approved up to? Well, I'm approved up to, you know, in California, let's say 1.2 million. Okay. So you're at 1.2 million. So if, um, if I could find you some homes to actually take a look at, would you be open to starting the process right now? Right? Would you be open into starting the buying process right now? Because this objection, guys, is tied to the sale. Would you be open to starting the buying process now? Would you be open to looking at properties this week if we found something for you? Because here's the thing is they're not going to list their property without having an understanding what's on the market. Now you could go into this and actually solve problems and finding out what their motivation is and see, is it an option for you to sell this home and do a short-term rental while we look for a buy for you? That's not a bad idea right now, guys. Given where the market's at, given the uncertainty of the market next year, not a bad idea. Inconvenience, yes, 100%. Nobody likes to do a double move, especially depending on the frequency. If you buy now or if you sell now, you move into a rental, a short-term rental, and you move again in three months, you know, that's not very fun, but it's an option. And most homeowners don't see that option unless you, as the experienced real estate agent, the professional, bring up that option. So let's take this from the top. So the objection is, uh, I want to find a house before I put mine on the market. You know, that makes total, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that makes total sense. In fact, I think it's the responsible thing to do as a homeowner to make sure that you have a house or have a place to live before you get rid of the one that you already have. Now, if you don't mind me asking, what is it specifically that in a house that you're looking for? Well, I'm looking for a four bedroom, two bedroom half in XYZ area. Okay, terrific. Now, have you already spoken with the lender or are you in a position just to pay cash? Well, I have already, I'm not in a position, I have a down payment, but uh, I'm not in a position to uh, pay cash. Okay, do you already have the down payment? No, I don't have the down payment. I need to sell this house to actually buy the next one. Ding, 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 ding. You wouldn't have known this if you wouldn't have asked a question, guys. Look, they need to sell this home to free up the equity before they buy the next one. So they can't buy the next one until they sell this one. And that's where it comes into you being a problem solver. But you have to ask the questions. Without asking the questions, you don't know the situation. Without knowing the situation, you can't solve the problem. And if you can't solve the problem, you're not listing a house, you're not selling a house, and you're not getting a commission. It's a domino effect. So Mr. and Ms. Siller, if I were to arrange a conversation with you and the lender, um, could you meet with them this week? And then as long as you're able to get qualified, would you be willing to start the process of looking at a property, uh, looking for properties now this week? Yeah, I mean, if you could do that, we would, we would do that. Terrific. All right, guys. So that's how I would do number eight on I want to find a house before I put mine on the market. And then I'm going to go through number nine. 
This is number nine of the 40 Mike Ferry real estate objection handlers. And this is, you don't handle homes in our price range. You don't handle homes in our price range. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So the way that I would rebuttal this, and we're getting short on time, so I'll, I'll tie it up with this. I don't sell homes. So I would respond to this with exactly what they asked me and frame it. I would rephrase, I would repeat their phrase, their, their statement in the form of a question. Wait, I don't sell homes in your price range. By doing that, they're automatically, because this is the way communication happens, by doing that, they're going to give you a little bit extra information. Now, you know, when we looked at your, uh, your experience and your background, all we saw uh, were homes that were not in our price range. Um, there were a few that were in our price range, but for the majority, you know, it doesn't look like you sell a lot of homes in our price range. Okay, you know what? I totally get that. You know, most homeowners want to make sure that they work with the right agent to get their home sold. Now, is that true for you as well? Now, guys, I did a level shift right there. I went from you wanting to handle, I, I, I don't handle homes in their price range to, again, going back to the, look, most people want to find uh, the right agent. And you can do the three things, right? Most agents are looking for someone to sell their home for top dollar in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle. Is that true for you as well? Yes, it is. Okay. So if you don't mind me asking, besides the price point, what other qualities and what other experiences or what other experience are you looking for in an agent uh, that you choose to get your home sold? I mean, is it just the price point? If somebody just sold a house and they've been in the business for two months, are they, do you think that you would want to choose them over someone like me who's been selling homes for 23 years? Well, no, no, no. Yeah, we don't want to work with someone. We don't want to work with someone new. No, you don't want to work with someone new. In fact, you know, I, me and my company have literally sold hundreds of homes uh, for sale in this immediate market, not only in your price range, but in all price ranges. Now in your price range, you know that it, you're the minority, the price range is the minority in the market, right? Well, yeah, yeah, there's, there's fewer homes for sale in your price range than in the other range. So is it more important to you to have an area expert, an expert in real estate that has a proven track record that could get your home sold for the most money? in the quickest amount of time with the least amount of hassle? Yeah, that is really important to us, Brett. Okay, so if I could show you a plan, a plan of action and what I do to get home sold and you felt comfortable and confident that I could accomplish those three objectives and uh, get your home sold, I mean, is that something that you would uh, consider listing your home with me for? Yeah, that is. Okay, so guys, in closing, I want to just really... Okay, so that's how I would handle, you don't handle homes in our price range using conversational selling techniques. Now I want you guys to just really, I wanna point something out. If you notice, I say a lot of the same things. If you notice, it's the same structure 90% of the time. And my go-to responses are always laying on my unique value proposition. My unique value proposition is that I've sold thousands of homes across 26 states and I've been in the business 23 years. So I'm always going to go back to market knowledge and experience and the three things that most homeowners want. And it doesn't really, you know, I only have maybe three or four different types of objections that I go to, but I just do, I mix them up, right? I mix up pieces depending on the objection, but the process is the same. It's still the ultimate rebuttal formula that I'm teaching you guys on. So Guys, that's it for this video. So those are the uh, number seven, eight, and nine of the Mike Ferry 40 Real Estate Objection Handlers. If you want to download his script, go to mikeferry.com. Next week, if you tune in live, you're going to get numbers 10, 11, and 12. So we'll get that ready. And if you're going to be role-playing next week, then I will make sure that we link you out to the individual trainings. Make sure you watch those before you get on your objection handling so that you can get the most out of your objection handling. So with that said, thank you for watching and get out there, have some conversations and close some deals. Take care.